Hey, 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 welcome to the Sports Reverence Podcast. My name is Dan. And my name's Drew. We're no experts, but we are the Sports Reverence. Practice. We sitting in here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a, not a, not the game that I go out there and, and die for and play every game like it's my last. Not the game. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? And we're talking about practice, man. I know it's important. I do. I honestly do. But we're talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about practice, sir. We talking about practice. We ain't talking about the game. We talking about practice, man. When you come in the arena and you see me play, you see me play, don't you? You see me give everything I got, right? But we talking about practice right now. That was the great Allen Iverson in 2002, May 7th, with that classic, classic interview. Does it, do you remember that, Drew, at all? You would have been pretty young. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, it a bit, but I think I just more remember it from, you know, sports shows showing it over and over again in their top tens of uh, interviews and media mm-hmm. presses and and that one in the playoffs. <laughs> playoffs! Yes, yes. <laughs> Coach, do you remember that? Welcome, Coach. Yo, welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me back, boys. Um, I remember that. Yeah, for sure. Um, there was such a hoopla around that. A, a player speaking out about practice. And I always thought it was kind of dumb because you don't worry about accountants practicing their accounting. They just do it, right? You're professional. The guy isn't going to lose his shot just because he doesn't put up, you know, 10 to 15 shots in practice. He was you only I mean? averaging 31.5 points a game that year. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. He could have done 35 if he practiced a little more maybe, huh? Maybe. 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 <laughs> I know it's a little bit misunderstood and a little bit uh, misquoted that, that, that uh, quote, but uh, it still was one of the classic interviews of all time. But guess uh, what, boys? There is some hope coming. Light at the end of the tunnel. Some light. And Drew, why don't you st- kick us off with some MLB news? Well, first of all, there's some news baseball overall. The KBO in South Korea has kicked off their schedule uh, in front of fanless stadiums. Uh, but it's good to see some baseball back. There's some ex-MLB players playing over there. Uh, actually, I saw a guy that used to play for the Blue Jays playing on one of the teams uh but also mlb is supposed to be uh putting in their plan for kicking off later this week um and some people have talked about what uh what the plans could be three 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 divisions um which looks pretty cool actually and it actually if you're a jays fan could give you a glimmer of hope Uh, oh okay not not too much. <laughs> you still have to play the Yankees. You still have to play the Red Sox. But you toss in uh, Pittsburgh Pirates are in there. Marlins are in there. Those are two of the worst teams in the yeah. league. Nice. Uh, and you're only playing teams in your division. Wow. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah. And a 100-game season, only play teams in your division. And, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm excited. Uh, hopefully it's – june or july nice. yeah, my first would be dope yeah for sure and i'm excited i love baseball i miss it it's such an easy game to watch sunday afternoons i miss the jays games oh, uh, yeah. come home after church and just fall asleep on the couch watching it's the, the jays best game. the best uh so yeah there is light at the end of the tunnel i hope and i'm looking forward to hearing the update later this week <laughs> That's Coach, cool. tell us some good news. Oh, man, we got lots of good soccer news. I know there's some soccer fans out there, um, despite what the reverends <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, Bundesliga is opening on the 16th. We What's a Bundesliga? The German Soccer League is opening okay. Bundesliga. 
You got the Italian Soccer League, Serie A. That's opening on the 16th. France canceled their season, so PSG are champs. Uh, Spain and England are both looking to open up in mid-June. But there is hope there because players are already going back to the respective countries. So that is – I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. Uh, you guys are crazy. You guys that are crazy. does sound exciting about soccer. I heard a lot of initials. <laughs> PDF, JPD. I don't even know ABC. who PSG is. Sounds like a delicious sandwich. <laughs> a BLT on PSG. Mm. Mm. There you go. A little spicy. A little spicy. <laughs> French baguette. Is David Beckham still playing? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, no, bend, like bend, like bend it like Beckham. Bend it like Beckham. No, I'm just playing. I follow a little bit of uh, football. I'm, I'll call it footy like the, the real soccer fans will call it. Um, but that's good. There's light, guys. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I'm pretty sure the nice thing US about it, though. Go, go ahead. The nice thing about it is that it's kind of – we see baseball coming back. We're seeing um, soccer coming back. Like Things are starting to kind of open up. And that, you're right, that whole light at the end of the tunnel thing is really exciting because right now all we got is the MJ doc on Mondays. And golf. It is good. And, and, and golf, yeah. And golf. And golf. Golf for Manitoba, not for us here in Toronto. We're still on shutdown until the end of the month, so. Oh, boys, oh, boys. All right, well, that's great that there's light, boys. Let's get into some of this NFL talk. That's the hot news of the day. The NFL schedule is dropping tonight. At 6.30 Eastern. So we pretty much already know all of the games. We don't know when they are. But which games, when you find out about them, are you going to be circling on your calendar? Let me know, Drew. Oh, come on. Put me on the spot here. I'm just kidding. You told us to do this, and I didn't. But uh... <laughs> just I, I, like I can you. Like you. Um I think for me, as a 49ers fan, any Seahawks game you're circling, that's going to be big. They play the Eagles, who could be top of the division for their division there, uh, trumping those Cowboys. Uh, Packers will be a big game because they, even though uh, there's uncertainty surrounding Rodgers, you know, the Packers are always good. The Cowboys will be another good game to watch. You could be seeing uh, two teams going for the number one seed. Overall, yeah, and the Saints for sure. Yeah, and the yeah. Saints, you know, Saints. that's would be tough. That's gonna be that's that's gonna be a yeah. awesome game yeah. for sure. And I also looking at um, the Chiefs and Saints. I think that's gonna be a shootout Ooh. for sure. Yeah, uh, some big time points being put on the board. Oh, Chiefs Ravens. I think that's gonna be another good game. Yeah. Um, I think so kind of like overall themes like the Ravens Cowboys would be another strong game to watch. Yeah. A bunch of games that, that have lined up. Uh, for me, the overall themes, I'm really, really interested to see what happens between the Bucks and the Patriots. Yes. Bucks, uh, if they're both kind of middling or if one goes up and other goes down. Um, if, if the Patriots suck this year, I think they're going to be so many, so many reporters and executives who are going to rip Belichick. And they're going to be so happy to do it. Including some sports reverence. Including some sports reverence. And the other thing, another weird thing, um, that was just kind of looking at the schedule, I think the AFC South is going to be super wide open. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, the Titans, yeah, sure, are, are the favorites. But I think the Colts might come back strong. Yeah. And um, Jacksonville might make some noise, too. I like, I like that of the Colts. I, I don't know about Jacksonville, but I'm, I'm big on the Colts, too. I think that's a great uh, – yeah, so I, I think it's a lot of, of fun games that are going to be highlighted this year, for sure. Cool, cool. All right, Reverend Drew. Yeah, well, I'm going to jump off of what Joel said. You know, he's a 49ers fan, so I'm looking at the Packers games here. Mm -hmm. um, Packers are going to have a tough schedule. We're going to find out tonight when they play these teams. But, um, yeah, they have to play Titans – I'm excited to see Buccaneers just to see Aaron Rodgers against Tom Brady. Always, yeah, always fun nah. to watch that. Yeah, and I want to see definitely. the Packers get some revenge against the 49ers. That's um, not going to happen, bro. It's, it's not going to happen. It it could happen. Uh, I think we're going to have to have maybe, a little maybe, friendly a friendly wager. 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They got spanked <laughs> last last year. I, I think I think in the two in the in the two games that the they got whooped. Packers play the 49ers in the first half. It was like 50 to zero. It, was, yeah. it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Yeah, but I'd like to see them get some revenge on that. They played they the Colts as well. The Packers though, so. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a good season for the Packers. Um, Maybe. You know, their division hasn't – I don't think it's gotten better you sound than last confident. year. You sound confident. Do I sound confident? Because yeah. I'm not really. Uh, you, don't, you don't think I'm trying Vikings to speak things into existence. <laughs> uh, I think the Vikings did get a little better, but I think the rest of the division got weaker. So that's, so that's tougher for your Packers then. Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. No, maybe. Well, like the Vikings, you never like they they filled some holes, but then they lost their big their uh, Stefan Diggs there. Yeah, they they replaced him in the draft. They think. They think, right? Like, and it's a, it's going to be a rookie. Like, how he's not going to be as good as Diggs, but yeah, and Thielen's getting older for a receiver yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I, it's going to be. I think that's a another one of those divisions that are up for change. It's going to be yeah. a bloodbath for sure. It's going to be a bloodbath. And Bears still don't know what they're doing at quarterback. <laughs> like. There's rumors they're going to sign uh, Cam Newton because Cam Newton just said he's willing to be a backup quarterback. Uh, oh, did he? He did today. That's a, that's a big change in stance for that guy. Uh, I still think Cam Newton goes to the Patriots. That's my, that's my be, guess. I think, I think that's a sneaky bet, yeah. To me, it's just I mean, a shame. I think he's a starter in this league for sure. No, but how? Good how? Level talent, but. You're, you're, you're betting on damaged goods, though. Well, you, you can't only, he's only there. three or four years removed from – MVP. Yeah, but it's been a steep decline. He's thrown a lot of picks. He's Whoa. been injured a lot. It's injuries. It's not about because before his the start of this uh the season uh this year, he was looking good again, but then he got injured. Yeah, but he he broke that life forensic, whatever it is, in his foot. He still is and, a cannon though. Still but he runs cannon. around a lot, right? So I don't know. I but if he can adapt into being a pocket guy, work on his accuracy. He never did. Yeah. RG3 never did. You Michael know, Vick did for a couple seasons Michael there. Vick did. Yeah, what are you talking about? A little bit. When he went to the Eagles? Yeah, he's money. Okay, you guys will disagree on that. No, you have to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing, well, you guys named a bunch of the games that I was, was already going to say. I was, I'm also looking forward to if Tua is starting, uh, <laughs> Miami versus Cincinnati is going to be fun to watch. Those yeah. two quarterbacks That's, going at each other, both kind of in like that same situation where their teams aren't good. So we'll see which ones can uh, uh, step up. I'm also excited to watch um, uh, Kyler Murray this year with the Cardinals because DeAndre Hopkins. It's going to be unreal. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. This year's going to be a good year in the NFL. Hopefully, if it ever if it, if it ever happens, I, I feel like that uh, that team with Kyler Murray. It's kind of those teams you make in Madden where you just trade a bunch of guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> you got Fitzgerald, you got Hopkins. Like, you can just air it out. And you'll be fine. Honestly. Or another, another thing that would, will be interesting to see if uh, Patrick Mahomes Ooh. can get any better. Yes. <laughs> right? I think I heard a I quote imagine. or saw a quote last year. Like, he's 24. He said um, he, was, he was really only picking it up in the second half of the year. You start to read defenses better. Yeah. yeah. Things out. I'm like, yeah, bro, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Are you yeah, kidding that's... me? Like, that's unreal. Insane. If, if that's if that's even like half true. Yeah. NFL's in for a big problem. Well, he played half the year last year on a sprained ankle, didn't he? Or, or well, he. Uh, yeah, a couple games. No, I thought he popped um, his kneecap out or something. I thought it was his ankle. Maybe. Well, we'll take a look. Yeah. Either way. Speaking of quarterbacks that need to get paid. Let's um, talk about Dak. Here, co- here comes the bias. Prescott yeah. and Andy Dalton, the Andy Dalton signing. No, I'm going to let you guys feel this first, and then I'll educate you, and then I'll tell you what's up. Okay? okay. So you guys, you guys ha- handle it first. Drew, you kind of look like him, so you start talking about Andy Dalton first. Okay, Andy Dalton is a decent quarterback. I agree. Um, I think I think he's wildly underrated. And people think he's terrible, but look at the team that he's had for the last 
two or three years when when they had their receivers when AJ Green was right like in, like yeah when AJ Green was almost like some would consider him the best receiver in the league uh, this was a playoff team and Andy Dalton was put up good numbers I think I think he's good enough to be a a starter still I agree um I don't really understand their logic. I'd love to hear a Cowboys fan's uh, reasons of why they did this. Uh, Because Dak's been pretty durable. Like, Mm -hmm. so he's not going to get reps. He's not mobile. They're not going to try and use him different ways. Um, But, yeah, I I like Andy Dalton. I I hope he does well. Uh, And, yeah, that's what I think of Andy Dalton. I think – Tell us uh, what you think. One of the reasons why they signed da- or Dalton is to put some pressure on Dak to sign a contract. Um, is Dak the best quarterback in the league? No, I don't think so. But he's asking best quarterback in the league money, which is, which is his prerogative. I mean, you got – they spent on the running back. They spent on the O-line. He wants to get paid. Totally understand. But I just – I looked up some of their stats – um, and of course, you know, this is nitpicking some stats, but um, completion percentage for their career, Dak is at 65.8. Dalton is 62. So not much of a huge difference there. Uh, TD percentage, which measures uh, the passes that go for touchdowns, Dak, 4.6%. Or sorry, 4.7%. Dalton, 46 So again, not a huge difference there. Intercept, interception percentage, Dak, 1.7%. Dalton, 27 Not a huge difference there. Yards gained per attempt, 7.6 yards for Dak, 7.1 for Dalton. Yards per game, 246.5 for Dak, 237.5 for Dalton. Uh, QBR, based off ESPN, this one's a little wider. Uh, the QBR is 68.17 for Dak, 53.375 for Dalton. And sack percentage, uh, 6.2. So this is a, every time they take a sack percentage-wise. 6.2% for Dak, 59 for Dalton. So in terms of who's superiorly better, the numbers don't lie. Right? I mean, obviously you can twist them however you want, but just I, I picked some fairly um, standard data and the, the drop-off wouldn't be huge and that's comparing Dalton with a very lack of star-studded cast compared to Dak who had Witten for a while Ezekiel Cooper like you know he's got some really good guys surrounding him and so for me personally I think that um, the reason why they signed Dalton is to put some put some pressure on Dak if Dak holds out, what are they going to do? You put in, you put in Dalton, and you you run. If Dalton strings a few games, if let's just say the Cowboys go four and zero to start with Dak sitting on the sidelines, his leverage diminishes, right? Because they're going to say, okay, fine. You want to sit down on the sidelines? Fine. We'll pay the guy three million dollars to be your backup, and he's going to win us games. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, then- let's, yeah, educate me, please. Are you done? Yeah, educate me, please. So I'm with, I'm with Drew in the sense that Dalton is probably good enough to be a starter in this league, um, which means the Cowboys probably have the best backup in the league. Um, I don't think there's a better one right now. Um, well, so the, some Miami. comments from – go ahead. I think Miami has a better – whoever you'd call the backup there, right? It's Patrick and Dalton or Tua cool. and Dalton. No, Tua uh, Patrick. If, it, if, if Tua is the backup, well, like, yeah. But Fitzpatrick and Dalton, they're comparable. <laughs> um, anyway, Stephen Jones' comments that were kind of, like, blown up today was uh, all because he's super encouraged uh, about uh, the signing of Andy Dalton, super stoked about it. Um, he, he quoted it himself saying he's the best backup quarterback in, in the league uh, that any team has. Uh, what they didn't – throw in the the media that uh, a lot of the media that didn't share the rest of his interviews that Stephen Jones says that uh, he will 
they will also for sure get a long-term deal done with Dak Prescott before the July 15th deadline. Um, okay. So we also need to understand this. Okay. It's not like the, the Cowboys haven't offered Dak Prescott money, first of all. Okay. So there's, there's a level of respect there that they have offered him lucrative contracts. No one has released the actual guaranteed money uh, that, that they've said, but the contract has been uh, in the 30 million plus uh, dollar deal a year uh, for multiple years. And um, the guaranteed money is the most uh, important thing, obviously, but no one's actually released that. And um, I'm sure it's supposed to be on par or if more than what Carson, Carson Wentz had. So right now, the main negotiations in the, in the contract for, for what Dak wants, Dak wants a four-year deal at, uh, in, the, in the mid-30 30 million to $40 million range. And um, no, yeah, Dak wants a $4 million, a four-year deal. And the Cowboys want to sign him for a five-year deal. And um, the reason why they want to sign him for a five-year deal, because in four years, the big uh, TV money contract for the NFL is going to get renewed and that's supposed to be a massive massive deal for the nfl like big money and uh, so dak wants to sign a four-year deal so then he can get a net another contract with bigger money and still a decently long contract um so that that's the negotiations here but stephen jones says it's gonna the deal's gonna happen they're gonna get it done before the july 15th deal um they're using andy dalton as uh, as purely a backup um and to give you perspective there have been seven qbs in the last little while um that have been franchise tagged only one of them has played under that franchise tag that that qb was kirk cousins playing for washington and um the other six qbs were signed in uh before the july 15th deadline for their perspective their respective years okay so there's little to no chance in my opinion that dak doesn't get signed to a franchise Take, I mean, to a to a long term contract this year, whether it's four years, five years. That though, um, no, it's 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 most likely going to happen. Um, and can I, I can do agree with you, Joel, that maybe it is leverage for uh, trying to get Dak to sign a five year deal instead of a four year deal. Um, but regardless, they're going to sign him, and it's just literally they have a great backup quarterback now in case, which is always a great thing for any NFL franchise to have, especially nowadays. Cause how many, they get I know Dak is, Dak is, uh, doesn't get injured often, but you know, it's, uh, you can never tell with NFL. I, th I think if it comes down to a five year versus four year deal, Dak is probably better off playing doing the Kirk cousins route. Yeah. Cause Maybe. Kirk made, Kirk made huge money. Yeah. Those three years. Yeah. Right? And it was like, I think it was like almost 90 mil guaranteed by betting on himself. Yeah. Because it was like, I think it was like 25, 28. Yeah, was 20, there was one year that was 28 million. Yeah. yeah. So he made, almost, he made almost 90 million, which is crazy. And then he signed, then he signed with the Vikings. But what so, if something happened? Right? Yeah. That's the question. But then, what if, what yeah, if he, no, no, he has his leg broken, not Alex Smith? Right? Well, Alex Smith was different though. Well, still, I'm just saying. He, Alex Smith would have been back if it wasn't for that staff infection, whatever infection he got. Regardless, That's, it's still all about guaranteed long-term yeah, money. True, but like, no, no, I, I know. I know what you're saying. I, I, I agree with you. And the smart move would be, I would agree with you, that they just franchise them for a couple of years. Yeah. That would be the smart business move, but that's not the smart, you know. The team-friendly, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. you know it's, it's it kind of brings another debate into play though too, hey, because it used to be I don't know if you guys even remember this far back, but you just assumed that players would just stick with the team they were drafted with, and do what was best for the team. And then I think when, for me at least, when LeBron made his whole decision thing went to Miami, that was kind of the start of like players taking back control of where they wanted to play. And so now, now I mean, you, I don't think we're going to see a guy like Kobe or Duncan. Like, look at Tom Brady left the Patriots. Yeah. Right? And so I, th I think as, as fans, oh, man, obviously as a fan, a Cowboy fan, you would love Dak to sign today, five years, get it done. 
but Dax got to look out for himself and, 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 and we have to respect that too, you know? Um, and I think that's just a, a, a weird reality of player looking out for themselves, team ownership looking out for themselves. Um, Cause Jerry Jones had no problem paying Ezekiel Elliott. Right. He sat out what one, two games preseason maybe. Yeah. And he got paid. So I don't, yeah. I don't blame, I don't blame Dak for trying to, to push this as much as he wants. I just don't think on, on a, on a year 2020, this season, if Dak doesn't play, I don't think it's going to be that big of a drop off between Dalton and Dak. You go first, Drew, and then I'll answer that. Yeah. Like just in defense of Dak for like, some people call it selfish for players sitting out and trying to get more money, but like if put yourself in put yourself in Dak's shoes, like yep. he was what a third or fourth rounder. Yeah. So right. he's not making he's not making first round money, and the Cowboys still paid Zeke before him, mm-hmm. who's been making the first round money. Yeah. Um, and Dak's been carrying that as valuable as, as Zeke to the team, no, right? No off field issues or anything. Right. Yeah. He's been Absolutely. a leader leader from day one says the right things in the locker room. Missed um, only one practice in four years. Yeah. And I've never heard anyone have anything bad to say about Dak. No. Um, did he throw the off-season party or was it Ezekiel Elliott who did? Dak Prescott. Okay. <laughs> and it was, it's been thrown out the window. So <laughs> yeah, less sure than 10 people. Okay. Usually TMZ doesn't get it wrong, but obviously nothing's happened. So, <laughs> so, Speaking to Joel's point or coach's point about the drop off, I agree. Um, Dak Prescott, as of right now, is only a step above Andy Dalton. Um, yeah. But if you look at trajectory, um, even comparing Dak Prescott to Russell Wilson and Tom Brady, it's there's no there's no um, there's no comparison. Andy no Dalton, comparison. I think you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Um, Dak Prescott is still ascending and on that progression that Russell Wilson and Tom Brady hopefully are, where they go from being a, a game manager to a, 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 a franchise quarterback, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's why you have to also look at when paying people, um, that's what you're yeah. looking at too, right? Uh, yeah. So, okay. Any other thoughts? Drew, you have any thoughts on that? No, I'm good. Well, talk to me about Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, all that's going on with the Green Bay Packers. Hmm. And uh, the little bit of controversy there, or, um, or what are your thoughts? Well, anytime, anytime you take a quarterback in the first round, it sends a message one way or the other, right? And Absolutely. to be honest, as a Packers fan, I think all Packers fans and maybe the rest of the league are trying to decipher what this message is. Yeah. Um, and I still haven't been able to figure it out because everyone's talking about Rodgers on the decline of his career. When you look at his numbers, I th- I still think he's pretty good. <laughs> like, like he's still got the same completion percentage, uh, still over four thousand yards, still throwing almost no picks every year, uh, with one receiver, and yeah. uh, especially with Aaron Jones stepping up last year, oh uh, yeah, they can rely more on the run game. Yeah, uh, takes a lot of pressure off him. I I think I think he's still got a few, at least three good years left. Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. he's 30, 36 years old. Well, he's uh, out the first three years, right? Yeah, he's, he's, yeah so he's got <laughs> fresher legs than most quarterbacks. Um, I just love watching Aaron Rodgers compete. Like, oh, yeah. he's always cool out there. Like, he, he never gets rattled. Um, but I just, I just can't wrap my mind around why you take a quarterback first round unless you have ideas mm-hmm. that – you're going to trade him or has Aaron Rodgers expressed that, you know, I'm not going to be around till the end of my contract. I don't know. Um, Cause I know Rodgers has ideas after football, like he wants to do certain things and um, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like such an odd thing to trade up to take a quarterback is, he I don't, to be, is the quarterback that they, they drafted, is he supposed to be like a utility guy? Is that what they're saying? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, th- I don't I, think so. not overly, like not any more than Aaron Rodgers is. Like 
Aaron Rodgers can scramble out, get a few yards, but legs. I don't. He's got legs. Yeah, he's, he's got legs. I don't yeah. know if I want 36 year old Aaron Rodgers running too much anymore, though. He can scramble, but no more but, running. Well, when you look at his injuries, it's not from scrambling. It's no. from staying in the pocket too long. Yeah, that's true. Because he's a he's a smart runner. Yeah. I mean, he'll yeah. take off for like a And he'll get out of bounds and and just do what he needs to do. And and he has no problem throwing the ball out of bounds if he has no options mm-hmm. either. Yeah, that's true. He ha- I think he has the most throwaways easily in the league every every year. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh he I think he's just a smart quarterback. I love watching him work. Um, that he never has help. Yeah, and if he had another receiver on the other side, I think it would be way better. Oh, uh, yeah. Devontae Adams is a beast, but teams can just lock, like, yeah. that's all you got to watch. Um, In the so deepest yeah. receiving draft yeah, it's, of all time. It just like, doesn't just make any understand. sense. And they probably could have got Jordan Love if they really wanted him later on. Oh, yeah. Second, third round, for sure. Yeah, so... Uh, Anyways, those those are my. I'm scrambling. Like, I think there is a riff with, you know, there there's things thrown out that it's hard to coach Aaron Rodgers and it's hard to uh, get him to follow my system. Um, yeah. And uh, they want to be a run first team, this and that, right? But I don't know. It seems like there's trouble. I think it's the start of Aaron Rodgers leaving soon. This this Man, reminds me of, of two things. Number one, when when they drafted Rogers for Favre and Favre was playing, yeah, very similar to that, it, which is weird, um, but also kind of makes sense in the fact that you want a long term plan things. But, but it was so. different. That was different. I know. I know. I know. I know. Favre I was saying contemplating retirement, right? I, but Favre was still playing well too. He was still playing well. Yeah. So I, I said similar, not exactly the same. Chill. I'm but, <laughs> but the thing that even more just just watching the Jordan I don't want to bring everything back to the Jordan doc but Aaron Rodgers reminds you of Jordan in so many ways and this whole drafting another quarterback sounds like Jerry Krause looking for like Tony Kukoc or Dan Marley to like take that next step you know it's really it's a very confounding Draft choice. But Tony Kukoc was a great addition to the team. They needed Tony Kukoc. No, no, but remember, remember they talked about how Kraus was blowing up Kukoc, saying he's amazing, blah, 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 the next step. And then Pippen and Jordan crushed him in the Olympics. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's almost like tearing down the dynasty before it's ready to be tear- torn down. That's the, that's the parallel I'm trying to make there. And... It, 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 I'll argue with that about you. I'll argue with that about uh, with you on Monday. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, that's fine. But you, whatever. Um, it's just really weird. I feel bad for Aaron Rodgers because there's a lot of pressure now to put on him to be like, not the way Favre was to him. So like, him making a phone call to Love was like, oh, Aaron's doing this. Like, what else is he gonna do? Right. He's probably really upset. He class has no help. Act. Class act for sure. Yeah, he's he's, got, he's really upset. He has no help. There's been a, I know there's a lot of stories where Rodgers is hard on his teammates, like his wide rights, wide outs, sort of like dropping balls and stuff in practice. But you kind of want that from your leader to be hard on you when you make a dumb mistake, right? Yeah, as I long mean. as as long as they are hard on themselves. Yeah, but some of Rodgers' antics on the field can. Yeah. Be taken as disrespectful. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you don't want to be like sometimes when he has a guy that runs maybe the wrong route, he'll like put his arms up in the air and sort <laughs> yeah. of embar- embarrass guys. Like, in, and uh, the body and language I, is great. Yeah. And I even heard a going back to when they had Mike McCarthy, I heard a story from I think it was Jeff Saturday was a uh, center there for a year or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said that. Mike McCarthy called a play and Aaron Rodgers actually rolled his eyes in the huddle and said, okay, guys, we're not doing that. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think, I think I love that Aaron Rodgers is such a smart guy that sometimes that can be a detriment to his game. Cause he sort of thinks he's smarter than everybody out there, yeah, that's, including that's the coach. A, that's, but that's I think a, last year you saw, you saw a little more of him respecting uh, LaFleur and, and like, 
Mm. It's, he's he knows his football, and I think um, they can sort well. of sharpen each other, right? Yeah, uh, and they can be hard on each other, just like you see. Uh, used to see Brady and uh, Belichick, yeah, uh, and the offensive yeah. coordinator there, McDaniel's. McDaniel's. Oh, yeah. They you see that you see that sort of give they sort of give it and take it the same way, and I think yeah. that's what uh, Lafleur and and Rogers had last year. And that should give you hope, right? You would imagine. Yeah, for sure. And Except then you take a quarterback in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last part of uh, last part of Rodgers and Packers. Do the Packers win their division? Yes yeah. or no? I think yeah. yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Even though the Vikings are looking good, but I'm going with Packers. Yeah. Like it's the Vikings would to have bet to beat the Packers both times, I think. Yeah. It's hard to bet against that bad man, Aaron Rodgers. So. Yeah. He is a bad, bad man. Bad man. All right. Train to Invest is one of North America's leading investment education and training corporations. Our purpose is to provide a new way for families, individuals, and communities to think about wealth management. Through teaching, training, and coaching individuals in the art and science of self-directed investing, we focus on a foundation based on capital preservation. Train to Invest offers a complete education and training experience, focusing on fundamental analysis, technical analysis, risk analysis, and developing skills for active trading. To find out more, visit our website at www.traintoinvest.com and download our free ebook to start your journey towards financial freedom. Again, that's www.train2invest.com and download our free ebook today. You guys want to talk basketball for a minute? Just for a minute? I'm sure you do. So go I ahead. do. So let's quickly. <laughs> so the rumor mill going around, potential Durant return if the uh, to finish off the rest of the season and playoffs. Um, would you guys be really willing to risk Kevin Durant for a playoff push this year, or do you wait till we're assuming that December is the new season, or do you wait till December? With a healthy Kyrie. Wait. Wait till December. It's not <laughs> worth it. Okay, let's just take a look. The Nets are sitting seventh right now. Playing the championship Raptors. Right? If, if, if Durant comes back, do I would you, be nervous. I'd be nervous for the Raptors, yeah. But do you really think that they're going to beat the Bucks with no Kyrie? I don't think they'll beat the Raptors with no Kyrie. And I don't he, think they beat any of the top three teams. Yeah. yeah. So why rush? You're paying the guy. You're already, you're already committed to paying him to not play this year. Yeah. Right? I mean. Yeah, they knew that going in. Yeah. So this year they're going to rid him off. Why, why rush him? Look what happened in the finals. Right? That's true. There's 100 plus million reasons why uh, not to rush him back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it'd be foolish to, to rush him back for – a first round win maybe yeah <laughs> but, it would, but it would be super exciting because if you look at like i think it was 1999 was the shortened season yep. uh where tim duncan well, spurs. and the spurs won right and yep. uh david robinson the the knicks were an eighth seed and they they made it to the next round right like random yep. stuff happens in a season like this and and you never know right i think like once this is back it's going to be just over the top ridiculously exciting because there's going to be rust that plays a factor there's going to be like yeah well, yeah Kept their body in shape plays a factor all those things it's going to be just so exciting well they're talking about when they reopen the nba they want a 25 day window they want 11 days for players to condition themselves and they want 14 days for another like training camp hmm. so i think i don't know if that's going to happen or not but with 25 days to get ready, I think it won't be as rusty as you think. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but what, what kind of weird thing to me about this whole lockout situation is guys not having access to hoops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this, this just seems such a weird thing to me. Like, how could you not have access to a hoop? If I'm that rich, I'm having a hoop in my place. I guess maybe if you live in a condo or an apartment block. So, like, New York and Toronto. The rest of the league should be able to. Yeah, be in LA, in LA. 
Well, yeah, LA. Well, LA. Most of them don't live downtown, right? Other than Kawhi. That's true. So, I don't know. It's weird. I think if the season if the season does come back, like who else is missing out right now? Well, Giannis. The big thing was Giannis. He was hurt, right? So now he has all this time to rest and get healthy. So he's going to be primed. I think that's the biggest one. Well, and I think I I think it'll be important helpful for the Raptors to to rest yeah. up too because yeah. those guys get played so hard every game yeah. like yeah. Kyle Lowry's leading the league in minutes isn't he minutes Something per like, game yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so it's up over yeah, 40 healthy Marcus all will be huge yeah, yeah. defensively yeah. and and he's a great option yeah so he yeah he makes that team tick so that's gonna be fun all right guys lastly um more rumor mills Giannis is being pursued by the Golden State Warriors. It's fake Potential. news. Fake Potential. news. Can you imagine Giannis on the Warriors? It makes me sick, really. That would just be unfair. If, if you're Milwaukee, do you uh, sign and trade for Wiggins just to get something back? No. <laughs> no. I – do you – well, this is – it's about next year for them. What if – Yeah. If you're a GM and your star player isn't talking about – doing a new contract do you risk it do you risk not having that you know yeah milwaukee is a bit of an interesting one though because they've built everything around Giannis. yeah you know just the way they they spread the floor how their bigs play (laughs) you know it's um it's a little weird that way i think if you were like what the raptors did last year was was defensible because they didn't build everything around Kawhi in terms of how they played. He just stepped it up a notch for them. Yeah. Whereas in, in Milwaukee, if they don't win this year, they're they in trouble here. Oh, well, they still have one more year. Yeah. To... But they're in trouble. The pressure, but then the pressure's on. Oh yeah. Right. I think the pressure's on now because. And they've already spent big on Middleton. They still have big on Bledsoe. That um, was a mistake. Unless, well, he hasn't been playing bad. Well, yeah, he always, but... he's a great regular season player. Playoffs yeah. comes and that's when he. I'd rather have Brogdon though. Exactly, exactly. He surprised me a lot this year. He stepped up a lot in. I love that Pacers team, that like Pacers top team. to bottom. That's a team that's going to a benefit from hey, this, right? Paul Depot is going to come back healthy, right? Yeah. So that's right. a team that benefits. Well, I told I told Dan a couple weeks ago. I think Indiana might have one of the best starting, starting five. Fives. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. That is true. Quality all the way through, yeah. I yeah. Agree. They're deep too. Sabonis has been like, oh, man. like close to MVP crazy. numbers. Yeah. He's... Imagine if they didn't trade away if OKC didn't trade away Sabonis and Oladipo. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like they'd be unreal. Well, like yeah. OKC sitting in a pretty good spot. <laughs> well, only and, because. But at that out. time, everyone thought that OKC won that trade. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. I. I think the Pacers fleeced them. Yeah. Big time. I, there's the also bonus many- was just a throw in, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 big time, big time. Well, uh, Kendrick Perkins, uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, said uh, um, the, he was talking about the value of Paul George and like. Ooh, so yeah. would you guys? I would say Indiana won that trade, oh, right? For, yeah, hands down. So. And then and then he went on to compare Paul George to Pascal Siakam. Who would you rather have right now? Siakam. So, that's what I would say too. Um, Paul George pre-injury though different story true different story because that guy that guy went toe-to-toe with LeBron yeah yeah when it took him to game seven yeah but yeah but like right now right now I would take Siakam even though yeah. Siakam's got a funky little hitch to his game like I don't know ICP all right I like I it I don't win Samara and Jane is an Australian-based accessories retailer with all of the latest fashion trends from around the world. Ladies, update your style game with gorgeous earrings, necklaces, and other jewelry for affordable prices. And guys, you can shop for that special lady in your life too. Use discount code SPORTSREV30 for 30% off your entire order. That's SPORTSREV30 for 30% off your entire order. Use discount code at checkout at SamaraAndJane.com.
All right, guys, final announcement. May 24th is the uh, charity golf tournament that is actually pretty exciting. It's Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning versus Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady. Oh, I'm going to tune in for that. I think that's going to be fun. Um, something exciting to watch. And uh, definitely we're excited to stay and staying tuned for all the new announcements coming up. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a different question than I regularly do to end the pod. Fine. You guys ready? Yeah. Maybe. Share with me an aspect of sports and your faith journey in like two sentences. Uh, okay. I, I, can, I, I can start off with this one. Two um, sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aspect of sports and my faith journey. Yeah. Perseverance. That uh, if you persevere in sports and you per- persevere with God, the, the right outcome will come. Whether you, whether you win or lose in sports is one thing. But your perseverance with God um, will give always give you the outcome you're looking for. That's good. Rev Drew? Yeah, it's like so many. Like my my whole growing up was mm-hmm. around sports and church. Like every evening I was either <laughs> at the church or at sports, um, sometimes both. And I think just like trusting uh trusting your teammates and like trusting the people around you surrounding yourself with people that uh keep you accountable um so like accountability like it's been great like even like dan and i have stayed friends through all these years we didn't play together in high school but we played together for our college men's league team yeah we did you know sports just brings you together and uh for sonics baby yeah and it's and it's allowed me to make friendships that have strengthened my faith, and uh, and I'm so thankful to have those in my life. All right, so we got camaraderie and team friendship, and and that. And Joel said perseverance. Um, I'll definitely I'll go with. Um, you didn't think this one through. Well, I was gonna say some something along the lines of perseverance too, but I'll I'll go with. Um, um discipline um learning to discipline yourself um both in your field of sport and in your faith journey as well and it's tough it can honestly it's probably one of the toughest things um having to say you know go to one of these huge fun events or going to practice or you know turning down uh going to some of these huge fun events that we might seem fun but you know probably not a good place for you to be because you're going to make some bad decisions so uh discipline was definitely one and that's definitely been good for my faith journey and i see sports and uh faith journey they just intertwine so i love it i love it it. all right so guys we'll be back on monday mj doc part four episode four. seven eight it's gonna be good um that's great boys that's peace great. peace peace